today on Rappler. Ako, huwag niyo gagawin sa akin yun. Tanginan niyo. Senator Cynthia Villar loses her cool over D and R reclamation projects in Cavite. The police says complacency of jail guards led to hostage taking of former Senator Lila de Lima. The Court of Appeals denies Maria Ressa's motion for reconsideration in her cyber libel case. The CEO of JP Morgan warns of global recession in six to nine months. Ateneo Blue Eagles coach Tab Baldwin warns his team after a historic loss to La Salle. Quezon City is among the top cities in the world listening to Taylor Swift and actor Donnie Pangilinan and his siblings graduate from college. Senator Cynthia Villar, chair of the Senate Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Climate Change, loses her temper over reclamation projects. The DENR confirms Senator Nancy Binay's sighting of islands in the middle of Manila Bay, saying these were part of 21 projects with approved environmental compliance certificates nationwide. Villar fumes, saying neither she nor former President Rodrigo Duterte were informed about the projects near the Manila-Cavite Expressway. Ako, huwag niyo gagawin sa akin yun. Tanginan niyo. Dumating ka dito, galing ka sa Cebu, ginulo mo kami lahat. Villar says the reclamation would cause 6 to 8 meters of floods in Las Piñas. Environment Secretary Maria Antonia Yulo Loizaga responds, saying the agency would revisit its reclamation policies. The Philippine police says complacency of the guards on duty led to the escape of three detainees and the hostage-taking of detained former Senator Laila de Lima. Uh, unang-una is uh, yung lapses na masasabi natin siguro naging kumpiyansa lang yung uh, polis po natin na mag-isa po niya na nagdi-distribute ng pagkain sa mga detainees. De Lima survived the hostage-taking incident Sunday morning, October 9, at the PNP Custodial Center inside Camp Crame in Quezon City. Detainee Feliciano Sulayo Jr., accused of being a sub-leader of the local terrorist group Abu Sayyaf, had reportedly seized the former senator from her detention area. Before taking the Lima hostage, Sulayo attempted to escape from the detention center with Idang Susukan and Arnel Cabintoy. The Court of Appeals denies the motion for reconsideration filed by Nobel Peace Prize laureate and Rappler CEO Maria Ressa and former Rappler researcher Reynaldo Santos Jr. over their cyber libel case. In a decision dated October 10, the CA says the arguments raised by Ressa and Santos were already resolved. The justices who signed the ruling are the same justices who earlier affirmed the conviction. The CA also claims the conviction is not meant to curtail freedom of speech, nor does it produce a chilling effect. In a statement, Ressa says she is disappointed but not surprised by the ruling. Santos, in a separate statement, says he still believes that the rule of law will prevail. Rappler's lawyer and former Supreme Court spokesperson Ted Te says they will now ask the Supreme Court to review and reverse Ressa's conviction. J.P. Morgan Chief Executive Jamie Dimon says the United States and the global economy could tip into a recession by the middle of the next year. In a CNBC interview, Dimon says runaway inflation, big interest rate hikes, the invasion of Ukraine, and the U.S. Federal Reserve's tightening policy are among the indicators of a potential recession. The benchmark S&P 500 index has lost about 24 percent, with all the three major U.S. indices trading in bear market territory. Diamond says the S&P 500 could fall by another easy 20%. In June, Goldman Sachs had predicted a 30% chance of the U.S. economy tipping into recession over the next year. Economists at Morgan Stanley placed the odds of a recession for the next 12 months at around 35%. The World Bank and International Monetary Fund also warned of a growing risk of global recession. For the first time in five years, the Ateneo Blue Eagles loses to the La Salle Green Archers in a thrilling 83-78 finish last Sunday, October 9. Green Archer Shawnee Winston broke down Ateneo's defenses with a 25-point performance despite the Eagles out-rebounding the Archers. La Salle head coach Derek Pumarin says he told his guys to never doubt that they can match up with Ateneo. Ateneo coach Tab Baldwin says when asked if he thinks his players can respond to the challenge, it's their job. They damn well better. He adds, there is simply no more room for error. The Blue Eagles face the USD Growling Tigers on October 12, 
while LaSalle carries its momentum as it faces the UE Red Warriors on the same day. Are you okay, Quezon City Swifties? Quezon City lands on the list of the top cities in the world listening to American singer Taylor Swift on Spotify. According to Spotify's data, within September 27 to October 24, Quezon City ranks fifth overall, placing behind London, New York, Sydney, and Melbourne. Meanwhile, Chicago, Los Angeles, Sao Paulo, Mexico City, Singapore, Atlanta, Brisbane, and Dallas are below Quezon City's ranking. Quezon City is the lone city from the Philippines that made it to the list. The report was released in anticipation of Taylor's upcoming album Midnights, slated for an October 21 release. The singer described her upcoming 10th album as a collection of music written in the middle of the night. Donny Pangilinan shares that he and his sisters Hannah and Ella have completed their degrees and graduated from the College for Global Deployment. The actor says the three siblings decided to complete their degrees over two years ago when the COVID-19 pandemic hit. In his post, Donny thanks his parents Anthony Pangilinan and actress Marcel Laxa for their guidance in helping him complete his studies. Maricel and Anthony post on their own Instagram accounts to express joy for their children's achievements. Fellow celebrities also congratulate the Pangilinan siblings for their achievement. Donnie is part of the popular love team Don Bell and is best known for his projects He's Into Her and Love is Colorblind. And that's today's wrap. I'm Marguerite De Leon. Thank you for watching. Click the link below for the full story. Follow us on Rappler's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok.